Hi guys, welcome to From the Witch's Garden. My name is Peggy and I am trying to grow a cut flower garden on my allotment here in Kanagawa Prefecture, Japan. Thanks for checking out my channel. Okay guys, so we had a bit of a scare this week because of my seeds. Um, a little bit of background, since I moved to Japan, I have lived in Niigata Prefecture, which is kind of north and cold and wet. Um, I live both rural and in the city of Niigata. I have then moved to Hokkaido, then Tokyo, then Okayama, then Kanagawa. So lots of different regions of Japan, all with different um, weather systems. And uh, I find that the gardening is mostly the same, uh, wherever I've gone, um, be that rural or city. Um, and it's very different from at home. So when people are buying land here, it's very, very expensive. So they tend to have small gardens in new builds, no matter where you are, the land is pretty expensive. Um, so new builds tend to have small gardens, most of which is taken up by driveways, more and more two car homes um, and lots of bicycles around. So uh, nearly all of the outdoor space is taken up by driveway, which means most people are gardening in pots, small plants in pots. They like to garden. There's a lot of garden centers around. You can buy some beautiful plants, but they tend to be of the smaller variety. If people do have gardens, then again, it tends to be um, smaller little potting plants uh, and also when they're going for bigger plants it's um kind of real showy plants that, that are beautiful there's a huge thing for roses here roses everywhere and they're beautiful um also lots of seasonal trees like your cherry blossoms and your plums and your khaki um persimmon trees um so it, it's very different and then in the big gardens when people do have big gardens they tend to be more formal japanese gardens which are very structured um the cat's just joined us <laughs> Say hi. Uh, yeah, when they're big gardens, they tend to be the more um, formal Japanese gardens, which are much more structured and uh, don't contain that many flowers. Um, they tend to be more structured shrubs and trees, beautifully um, cloud pruned, cloud sheared, pruned, a bit like clouds for Mario. So very little flowers, which means that when I am shopping for seeds and bulbs for my allotment garden, where I want something that's a little bit different, um, a rarer breed, a rarer type of flower, um, I am having real difficulty finding it. If I can find it, it tends to be very, very expensive. So I have combated this by having my mum send me my seeds. I've been ordering seeds from mostly Chiltern seeds in the UK and then my mum sends them over. And we haven't had a problem with that at all. And I thought that that was okay. Um, my understanding of the import rule here was that you weren't allowed to import um, bulbs or tubers or um, corms, but you could import seeds as long as you stuck to a few rules, which was that it had to be from a reputable, reputable seed dealer. So my mum couldn't collect seeds in her garden and send me them. They had to be properly packeted um, with the Latin name shown on them. Uh, and, that, and that would be OK. Now, I've had lots of seeds sent to me, um, including one time when the seed packet burst open and seeds were falling out of the packet and the customs people opened the packet for me put sellotape over the, it was a box of seeds, so they put sellotape over the corner of the box that had burst, gathered up the seeds that had spilled and put them in a separate little bag and then posted it onto me. So I was thinking that means it's okay to send seeds. Well, most of my seeds for this year have come, but I was still waiting for a few others that I ordered um, a bit later on. And this week the parcel from my mum arrived, yay! Chocolate biscuits, um, some more Tetley tea, some cat treats, some treats for the kids and my little bag of seed packet, um, packet of seeds, except there were no seeds in it. And instead of there being seeds, there was a letter, this letter, uh, which came from the Yokohama plant protection station saying that the customs and immigration people had destroyed my seeds. Yep, they're gone. Apparently, I um, did not have a photosanitary certificate issued by the Plant Protection Organization of the Exporting Country, which was a violation of paragraph one of Article 6 and is punishable by three years in jail or a one million yen uh, fine, which I do not want. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, now the plants that I ordered did have a UK plant passport attached to them, uh, which I thought would cover this, um, but obviously that's not the case. Um, in, I then called them, uh, the 
Yokohama plant protection station. I called them and said, look, why am I, why did you do this? Why did this happen this time? And they said, no, I definitely needed this certificate. Now, the UK government is unlikely to issue me a certificate for five packets of seeds or however many packets of seeds. This is much more aimed at um, big distributors who are buying in bulk and then sending to the, the shops here to sell. Um, so this is just, it's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna get one of these. Uh, so now I'm stuck. What do I do for seeds? I had a total panic. Okay, so most of my seeds for this year had actually already arrived, um, but I did have a few things that I wanted and they were pretty important things for my garden plan. I had ordered my um, amaranthus hot biscuits. I had ordered a Cosmos Xanthos, Cosmos the cupcake series and a cupcake blush. I'd ordered my um, Zinnia giant cactus flower mix, Zinnia polar bear, Zinnia uh, Benares giant, with the, which was the salmon rose one, which I really wanted, it was so beautiful. Um, the Zinnia queen lime series in orange and Zinnia queen lime mixed, and then also annual ornamental grasses mixed. Now these took up quite a big area of my garden, um, especially the grasses. I was I didn't do very well at uh, growing my fillers this year and I thought if I just got a grass mix it would give me a nice selection um, in a small space of what I could have. But that's not going to happen. And as well as panicking about what I'm going to fill this with, it's what do I do next year and the year after that. So like I say, I can get seeds in Japan, they're just like, you can get the cosmos but you're only going to get the white and purple, plain five petal kind of standard cosmos you can get zinnia but they're like the bright traffic cone orange <laughs> um, zinnia that you can get and a lot because people are growing smaller here a lot of the plants and seeds that you buy here are actually a dwarfed variety of them so you're not getting the big ones for cutting so the likes of snapdragon i've never seen a proper cutting flower snapdragon here they're all the small dwarf varieties so I really panicked. Now, obviously, if I could buy seeds in Japan, I would have been doing that from the start. You know, it's, it's much better for the environment. It's much better for the, um, for uh, growing conditions here if the seeds are from here. Um, this, you know, getting them from the UK, it wasn't ideal. Um, and I understand, you know, I'm not, I'm not angry at them for getting rid of my seeds. I understand they've got to protect uh, against diseases that can come in um, against invasive species, that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not mad that they've done it. I just don't quite understand why it's happened now after having so many um, seeds delivered to me before where they've known their seeds, I've declared them every time. I've very carefully done the paperwork to make sure that, you know, we were allowed to do this. So I don't know if they've tightened the rules. The guy couldn't really explain to me um, if the rules had changed or why this time it's not worked, but it's not worked. And I don't want to go to jail for having an allotment garden. <laughs> so uh, I have spent a lot of time, a lot of time this week on the internet trying to figure out how I can get myself new seeds. Now I'd already done quite a lot of digging because like I say, I couldn't um, import uh, tubers or corms. So I'd already been looking for somewhere where I could get nicer dahlia, things like that. Um, and I'd basically come up with nothing. I'd found a few breeders, but they only seemed to be selling wholesale and I could not for the life of me figure out where they were selling them wholesale to because I couldn't find anywhere else to buy them. So yeah, I was panicking, proper panicking, but I found one. Yes, I found somewhere. Come on, let me show you. Okay, so after a lot of hunting, I found these guys, uh, Takinetto. Thank goodness. These guys are a wholesale seed and bulb supplier. Um, they have a lot of fruit and things on here, but they also have loads of flower seeds. Yes, and they're good varieties and they're a mix of varieties. I'm so, so glad um, that I managed to find these guys. So they do have some of the stuff that I was hoping to order, like um, the cupcake. These are my cupcake cosmos that I wanted to order. Uh, and they have these, the exact ones that I wanted to order. So that's great. So I've gone ahead and I've got some of them, but they don't have everything. Uh, the main one they didn't have was my ornamental grasses. I couldn't find anything remotely close to ornamental grass being sold here. Uh, and so I've had to improvise and think, what can I fill the garden with? Um, and what can I use instead, basically, to get a filler? And there were very, very few fillers here. Now, if you've ever seen um, 
a traditional Japanese garden, the main difference that I found with them is that they don't have much ground cover. Um, they are beautiful structured elements and then underneath just tends to be moss or bare ground or raked stone or something like that. There's very, very little ground cover. Um, the idea of grasses swaying in the wind just doesn't fit at all um, with what the structured garden is. And so uh, here grass is just a weed or if you're going to grow um, a grass it's because you want to eat whatever it's making <laughs> you know you're gonna grow millet to get millet um not necessarily to cut it and put it in a bouquet and that is reflected in the standard bouquets that you get here i say standard there are some absolutely beautiful flower shops that are doing great arrangements i follow people online in japan that are doing beautiful beautiful big arrangements i just have absolutely no idea where they're getting their flowers from i assume they're all imported um because what you get here, you know, your standard flower shop in the train station, stuff like that, it's a very simple bunch that tend to have um, roses, garbellas, uh, that kind of stuff in a few berries if you're looking for some foliage and um, not much else. So uh, I'm really glad that I found these guys and I'll show you what I've ordered from them. I'm being ordered. <laughs> I'll show you what I've ordered from these guys. Okay, so from Takineto, I ordered these Cosmos cupcake series. Cosmos Shambosu. Now, this is the only problem is that it's the Japanese name. I'm not sure what that would be um, in English. Okay, the site did have a really good selection of zinnia seeds, um, which really surprised me. Um, a huge selection, actually, but they didn't have exactly the same ones that I wanted. They did have these, which is the Lime Queen... Um, which one did I say these? Red. The Lime Queen Red. Uh, so I have some of them. I got these, sorry, they did have the polar bear. So these are the um, Dahlia series uh, polar bear. This Zinnia Giant Mix, which has some really nice flowers in there. I really like the dark purples, um, but it also has some of the oranges that I couldn't get in um, my Zinnia orange mix, uh, the Lime Queen series. The Zinnia Senorita Pink Mix, uh, which again, I love the scraggly flowers of. I think they look great. I'm hoping that they're a nice big one as well. And finally, the Zinnia Art Deco, um, which I think are a really beautiful colour as well, and a nice mix of different shades. Okay, so that was the stuff that filled up um, my Cosmos and my Zinnia, but I still had a big gap in my garden where I should have had um, my amaranth, the hot biscuits, and my big section of ornamental grasses, which was pretty much all of the foliage um, I'd put in. I needed to find something to replace that. And like I said, they just didn't have that um, available. So I've had to kind of think about what I actually needed, um, what I was looking to, to replace. Um, and I thought, well, the grasses add movement. They tend to be tall. They tend to be um, as I said, fillers. Um, but also, I liked that with my amaranth this year, I mean, I know I didn't have very much in the allotment this year, but my amaranth this year did act as a kind of nice spike um, in the bouquets or kind of gave it some structure. And so I'm kind of thinking I have a lot of snapdragon and stock um, in the garden this year, but they are flowers that tend to come quite early. So I'm looking for something that gives that same spike flower, but for later on at kind of the end of the season and also has an airy and some movement to it. So that's what I was thinking when I looked through what was available there um, on this site to see what I was going to um, replace my grass with. And so what I went with, um, I'll run you through. Okay, so to start off my filler, um, I got some of these, we always called them Chinese lanterns as kids. I'm not sure if that's what they're actually called. Um, but we got, I got some of these, uh, which I love. Now I did try and grow some of these in my garden this year and they didn't do very well. So I'm hoping that I can get them going better in the allotment. So I've got some of these. This Minerobata, again, I don't know what that would be called in English, but this is due to bloom um, at the end of September, October, November. And I think it will look great with the end of season, kind of uh, Halloween-y October fall colors. Um, love this. I ordered some more Rubecchia. This is the caramel mix because I thought they looked amazing. They reminded me of Fraggle Rock. Love those. This Dede Sukasa. Um, again, I, I don't actually know what it is, but it looks a lot like the Ami that I grew last year, um, but a nicer color. I really like that too. Okay, I got this stuff. Um, Merasu Ferura. 
Ramose. This is one of those ones where I translated it in, well, I read the Japanese and then I thought, I don't know what that is, I'll look it up in English and I can't pronounce it in English either. So we'll stick with that. Um, and this looks a lot like a grass. It's kind of tall, it's wispy and it's got a really nice little flower on it. So um, I think hopefully if I can get this going, it came as a bulb as well, which is great. I love a bulb. Um, it, I just feel like you're getting more for your money when you get a bulb because you can use it again. Um, so uh, I've got some of this coming and I'm excited to see if I can actually get it going. Yeah, this is native to um, the Cape in South Africa, so it's used to a hot growing condition. So I'm hoping that this should do OK on the allotment this year. This is another one from South Africa um, and it's called uh, uh, here. I've got a Watsonia dwarf orange. Um, I'm a bit worried that it says that it's a dwarf variety, but it does also state right here um, that it grows up to 50 centimetres. So I'm hoping that that'll be long enough for me to get a, um, a nice cut stem from it. And again, it's kind of long, it's wispy, it's tall, and it's got a really nice colour, which for the end of season will be beautiful. Okay, so that's everything that I got to um, put in the area that I wanted to put my amaranth and my grasses. And it's not the same as having grasses. I'm, I, I still am going to be looking for grass, grass seeds. Uh, but for now, this is what I'm going to try and grow. And I just um, hope that I get that nice flowiness uh, and a bit of a mixture to kind of fill out my um, my displays a little bit but that was it for the grasses the only other thing that I ordered on this site was some dahlia now <laughs> um, my dahlia haven't done well this year and they've all been much smaller uh, than I was expecting um, but I'm going to try those again they've all, they, I think they are going to give me some um, tubers so I, uh, I'll try those ones again this year and just get them out earlier, get them um, more water to start them off with and get them uh, netted earlier. So give them support earlier so that they grow nice and straight instead of the craziness that's going on now because of all the typhoons they were hit with. Uh, but I have got space for a few more Dahlia and I spent so long looking at all the different varieties and there are so many and this, this site was really, really good for having a huge variety of dahlia. And it just came down to, I don't know. I don't know how you choose. They're all so pretty and the colors are all so pretty. And, um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not good enough in the garden yet to know what color combinations I'm going for. Now there is um, Sarah who runs Bloom and Grey. Um, I watch her on YouTube all the time and she has the most beautiful florals I've ever seen. Um, she's growing on, I think it's about half an acre she has and a couple of grow houses uh, down in Yorkshire. You should go and check out her channel. I absolutely love it. And the bouquets she puts together are absolutely beautiful. And it always amazes me that she goes out into the field and seems to be cutting a lot of the same thing. But then when she puts them together, they have such coherent colour patterns and uh, um and she has great colour choice and selection and they look great together. And, you know, she can kind of pick a big bunch of what looks like similar flowers. And then she puts together a purple bunch and a white bunch and a pink bunch and an orange bunch. And it looks great. And I would love to do that. But my allotment is so small that I don't have the option of growing lots of different um, types and colours and shades of the same flower to be able to do that. Now, she has suggested that she's going to be doing an online course um, which shows how she selects what she's going to grow for the colours and the colour combinations. And if she does, I'm, I'm in. I, I want to see that because, like I say, she has the, the most beautiful flowers that I've seen online. You should all go check her out. Bloom and Grey. Not a friend. Don't know her. Hi, Sarah, if you're there. Love your channel. Um, but yeah, her colour combinations are amazing and that's what I would like to achieve. But right now, I kind of think I've only got such a small space. How do I decide if I want to have three different types of dahlia all in similar shades of orange? It means that all I'm going to have is orange flowers. Um, so I don't really have the luxury of doing that yet. Uh, so um, this is what I chose. <laughs> So I chickened out of deciding which ones, um, which specific dahlia I wanted. And I've just gone for another mix again this year, which I guess is part of the learning um, process. Grow as many things as I can and decide what I like, because right now um, I'm still in the stage of I don't know. I don't know what's out there. I don't know what looks good together and I don't know what grows well. So for this year, again, it's just a dahlia mix. And um, let's hope that they do better than my dahlia did this year. <laughs> Okay, and that's it. That's everything that I've got. So the week started um, panicked, <laughs> shall we say. And uh, uh, but I'm so glad that I found the, um, the tacky website that I did and that they had such a great arrangement of, um, of seeds and bulbs that I could choose from. And I'm so glad that I now have found somewhere within Japan that I can get those uh, things from. Like I say, they didn't have everything that I needed, but it was enough for what I'm doing now.
um, which is great, but it is really hard. Um, you know, my, my Japanese isn't great, so I am still taking a long time to search through all of um, the websites to find what I need and what I'm looking for, and things have different names, and and it's just very complicated. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad I found this. But if you know of any suppliers in Japan, then let me know in the comments, please. Point me in the right, right direction. I would greatly appreciate it. If any of you guys live in countries where you also find it hard to find good seed suppliers, please drop it in the comments so that if anyone else happens to be looking through from your country, they know where to get them either. We need to be a resource for each other. Um, but that is my seed story. So yeah, nasty letter, possibly going to jail. <laughs> ditched my seeds but it ended up okay and I've now found somewhere within Japan to be able to get my seeds um so this year's garden is saved if it looks a bit different than what I was planning so be it uh but now I just have to wait uh, for these seeds to arrive which is very exciting and hope that they actually come this time <laughs> But that's all for me. Thanks for uh, watching along. I do find out tomorrow <laughs> if I get the allotment. Sorry, I made a mistake last week. Um, so I'll keep you guys updated as to whether we get it back or not. Uh, and then next week I will be running through a complete plan of um, what the garden's going to look like next year now that I've had to make some changes to it. So <laughs> that's my plan for next week is to run you through the garden plan. Um, but thanks for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye.